Hello everyone. Today's video is about uh, single transistor amplifiers. And more specifically, we're going to discuss a um, PMOS common source amplifier. So let's just look at the configuration and understand uh, basically the path of the signal. So the input is uh, connected, as you can see, uh, right here, connected through a decoupling capacitor is connected to the gate of a PMOS transistor and then the output is taken from the drain of the same transistor. So if you just want to assume a, an imaginary or abstract uh, path for the signal it goes like this. It goes from the gate and then ends up in the drain and then connected to the load which is 10k in this specific case. And that's why this specific configuration is called a common source uh, amplifier. So between the three terminals of the transistor, uh, there's one that is connected to the input, and that's the gate in this case. And there's one that is connected to the output, and that's the drain in this case. The third terminal uh, that is not connected to the input nor connected to the output is called the common terminal. And this is just a convention uh, that is used uh, for naming these uh, amplifiers, single transistor amplifiers. And there are three different kinds, a uh, common source, there's a common drain, and there's a common gate uh, configuration that we're going to discuss later on. Okay, so in this specific problem, what we know is the threshold voltage for the transistor. We also know that uh, we, are sim we are using a simplified model where lambda for the transistor is assumed to be zero. And then we also know uh, values for three out of four resistors in the circuit. And finally, we know the voltage of the drain source or source drain, the DC voltage basically, the bias voltage for the uh, source drain. Uh, meaning that's the uh, voltage assuming that there is no input connected. So that said, uh, what's left to be calculated is basically the resistor RS uh, for which we don't know the value and also we don't know what the uh, K for the transistor is. So KP is also an unknown. So let me just have that here kp is unknown we need to calculate that for this specific condition and then we also don't know what rs is so we're going to start with the dc analysis as explained before so that we can actually calculate all the uh, voltages currents in the circuit plus any value for the components that are unknown the process as we all know is uh, the same algorithm so this is the minus 5 volt this is 5 volts and at this point because I'm doing DC analysis uh, the capacitors are assumed to be open circuit so basically the 10k right here in the output and VI in the input we don't need to consider those in our calculations uh, they're decoupled so this is uh, VG again this capacitor is open so it doesn't contribute to anything at this point that's VS and this is VD now as for the current goes um, the DC current through the resistor here is actually zero because there's no the current that goes in uh, or out it really that is connected to the gate so that's zero therefore the current through uh, the 100k has to be zero so this is zero and then therefore with that I'm only dealing with one current in the circuit that I'm going to call ID at this point again this 10k uh, because this is an open circuit is not connected and the input is not connected. So now I can start writing equations for components. 
there is no KCL to be considered so equations for components for RS we have ID equal to 5 minus VS 5 volts minus VS divided by RS uh, for the 10k resistor down here we have ID equal to VD minus minus 5 volts divided by 10k I'm going to keep uh, all the values in milliamp and the resistors in kilo ohm then uh, the equation for that 100k uh, basically it's simple I'm gonna write it for you it's 0 is equal to VG minus 0 divided by 100 K which basically immediately gives you the value of VG so VG is basically 0 the DC value of VG that's that so the only component that is left at this point is the transistor we're gonna assume that the transistor is actually in uh, saturation and the equation for the saturation would be ID is equal to KP times VGS I'm gonna write it VG minus VS VG already I know it's zero so that would be minus VS minus VTP and that's minus two so that's plus two to the power of two times uh, one plus lambda VDS and lambda zero so there's nothing to be added to this equation and then finally I'm gonna add anything else that I know about the circuit that is all not all uh, yet included uh, which in this case is the voltage between the source and drain so VSD is uh, basically VS minus VD and that's uh, equal to 6 volts okay now we can count the number of unknowns in our circuit so ID is unknown VS is unknown uh, and RS is unknown and KP is unknown and VD is unknown so we actually have five unknowns in the circuit but if you count the number of equations that we have left there are only four equations this one basically gave you VG but that I didn't count that as an unknown so there are four equations but five unknowns. What that tells you is that there is one degree of freedom in this design problem. In, in, in other words, there you can choose one of the unknowns and uh, calculate the rest. So that's called the one degree of freedom. As a designer, you can actually choose a value for uh, one of the unknowns in the circuit. Now, when it gets to designing an amplifier, one of the uh, basically values that would be great to focus on when it comes to the design is actually the DC value of the output. In other words, VD uh, in our circuit. And normally in a common source uh, amplifier like this, you set the VD somewhere uh, close to middle uh, or up to two-thirds uh, of the voltage difference between uh, the two rails so let's say we have 5 to minus 5 so there's a total of 10 volts um, here and we already know that VSD is 6 volts so there's like 4 volts left to be distributed among these two resistors so you can either go like one volt here and three volt there so which it gives you basically six plus one seven volts and three volts there you can go even further down leave this to basically half a volt across rs and then leave all the rest up here um, six is already two-thirds of uh, 6 volt is already two-thirds of 10 volts almost um, so um, you can basically uh, reduce RS as small as re reduce the voltage across RS 
to a small value and that would be a, a good choice however there is always a trade-off between that choice and what the value of rs ends up being because obviously as uh, you can see the id is the current that is passing through both rs and rd and therefore uh, if you want a lower voltage across rs compared to rd then this rs has to be basically a, per, a small value compared to rd in order to leave more voltage drop for the 10k compared to the uh, voltage drop across rs and uh, as we will discuss later on rs actually has a functionality in the circuit uh, that uh, basically by increasing it the uh, s stability of the bias in the circuit increases and therefore there's a trade-off here so as you make this a smaller you lose that stability um, that said uh, what we can basically do just uh, here is to uh, distribute the uh, voltage that is left to uh, RS and the 10k uh, equally like say we're gonna have a 2 volt drop of voltage across rs another 2 volt across 10k and the rest which is 6 volts is obviously that was left for the transistor that's just a simple choice it's going to obviously give you the same 10k value for rs when you're basically assuming that the drop of voltage across both of those are the same and uh, you are what you're going to gain at that point is basically pretty good uh, stability bias stability so that, that's what we're going to do uh, just again keep in mind this is a keep in mind that this is basically a degree of freedom you can be, you can choose uh, the value of rs or the value of vd for that matter um, so uh, with that what we're saying is that i'm going to assume vd uh, is actually equal to minus 3 volts and then I can basically with that assumption go ahead and uh, solve the set of equations as it turns out if you do that like what we said uh, we're gonna get uh, RS being equal to 10k uh, as well and VS ends up being equal to 3 volts uh, and VD is minus 3 which means the VSD is minus 6 okay, now from this I can calculate uh, KP so 0.2 milliamp is equal to KP uh, and then VS is uh, 3 volts so minus 3 plus 2 to the power of 2 so from this KP is equal to 0.2 milliamp per volt square okay now with this we can start uh, developing the small signal model after uh, f uh, basically finishing the DC analysis uh, if you uh, recall the linearized small signal model for the transistor uh, is like this this is gate source and drain and there's a current source in between the source and a drain now for i'm sorry this is drain and source now for an nmos uh, the direction of the current was uh, from the drain to the source but this is a pmos so the direction of the current would be from the source to drain that's the only difference and everything else is the same gate is an open circuit and this is gm vgs so this is the model that we uh, we have uh, to, we have to use for our small signal analysis and what's missing at this point is gm we already uh, discussed this gm is basically the derivative of uh, id with respect to vgs and uh, calculated as t at the value the dc value of vgs uh, so with that we have two times k pi 
VGS plus two as our GM. Um, so this would be 0.2 times 2.4. VGS is a number. Um, VGS calculated was uh, uh, was calculated as as minus three. So that would be minus three plus two is minus one. So that would be minus 0.4. Uh, and the um, unit here is actually uh, milli Siemens or mu. This is current divided by voltage, but the current is milli, so milli Siemens is the unit. Um, with that, now we can develop the a small signal model. So with that negative, now this direction can actually go back. I can use the positive and put a uh, basically put it back in the other direction. Uh, so if I use basically the magnitude of GM, I can basically use exactly the same model. So then The source is connected through a capacitor, but the capacitor is a short circuit, assuming that the capacitor is large enough for all the uh, signals to go through. And then this gets connected to the small signal model. Uh, and source is connected to RS, but also there's a capacitor here. Then again, that's a short circuit. And that means that this source, the source down here actually, gets directly connected to, sorry, directly connected to ground. Um, so it's connected to ground and through a resistor connected to ground. But once it's connected to the ground, then the connection through RS uh, is shorted out. So it doesn't matter. For the drain, there's the resistor 10K to ground. And then there's a capacitor, short circuit. So another 10K to ground. And then like what we mentioned, if I use a positive GM, this direction goes back. So this is drain, source, I'm gonna actually call that V out, this VG, and this is VS, which is equal to zero, and that's 100K. This is my VI and this is V out. So now I'm ready to do my calculation. This is actually a really simple calculation at this point. Um, you don't have to do much. The, these two are, could be considered one resistor through which the same current passes, which is 0.4 times VGS. So 0.4 VGS. Now VGS is VG and actually VG and VI are the same thing. So this basically is 0.4 VI. So 0.4 VI is passing through this resistor and I'm gonna write the equation for that resistor which becomes uh, 5K in the current 0.4 VI is equal to a zero minus V out divided by 10k in parallel with 10k, which is 5k. So this is minus V out over 5k. So from all of this, we have V out over VI, which is the gain of the amplifier, being equal to minus five times 0.4, and that's minus two. Obviously, the, this is unitless. Sometimes it's called volt per volt, uh, which is which means the same thing. It's unitless, and that is the gain for your amplifier. Uh, hope this has been helpful, and thank you for your attention.